waiting to do this particular video for a while. This is going to be what's in my sample bag video. And the reason I've been putting this off is I have so many stinking samples that I have gotten that it took me I don't know, kind of days to really go through and see which samples I really wanted to include in this video and which samples I kind of were just gonna, just gonna keep out. If not, it was gonna be video one, two, three, and four if I was gonna do everything that I have. Because you know now, a lot of times when you order things online or you buy things, they'll send you samples automatically or for example with Sephora, they actually let you pick the samples out that you like if you're ordering online. And I just sometimes use the samples I get, uh, use them all up, and then maybe sometimes buy the product or sometimes use the sample and decide, hey, I don't like this at all. I'm not going to buy this product. But then other times I may use the sample once or twice, like a perfume in particular, and then just not use it again. But I'm kind of a pat brat about certain things, so I may just keep it. So I decided to go through some of the samples that I've recently gotten and just kind of give you my first impressions of the samples. Some of the products that I had that are in here that were samples, I actually did go out and purchase because I love them so much. Um, some of the other ones, I'm glad I actually had the sample first because I probably would not be purchasing it. So I am actually going to be doing this video probably over a couple of days. So if you see me change from one outfit to another or there's like different lighting in the room it's because it's not being filmed all at the same time so i'm kind of doing this in bits and pieces so let's get started with what's in my sample bag okay let's get started with samples number one i have two samples here almost in the same container one is the josie marin argon oil and one is the tarte pure maracuja oil. Now I've been using the Tarte maracuja oil for I don't know how long. I absolutely am, lo I'm in love with this maracuja oil. I put it on every night. Um, I have oily skin. I have breakouts once in a while and this has never caused me any problems with my skin making it oilier or making it more having more breakouts. It really is an amazing product and I don't use it obviously in the day because it's quite, it has quite an oily consistency. When you first put it on your face, you almost feel like you're putting on an olive oil. Both the maracuja oil and the argon oil come out, this looks like a little eyedropper they come out of as you can see. And it's just an oily, I don't know if you can see that, it's just kind of an oil, it's hard to see, it's just running down my finger there, you can't even see it, it's clear. And you only, it only takes, you know, I use probably eight or so drops, I put it on my face and on my neck, and I put it on at night before I go to bed. Now when you first put it on, you think to yourself, I just slathered on olive oil all over my face, this is really gross. But it really does seep into your skin and by the next morning, my skin is so soft, it's like a little baby skin, like a baby's butt. I just love this stuff. And I'm torn because I've been using the Tarte Maracuja oil, and then all of a sudden I got this Josie Marin Argon oil. While they're both, while they both pretty much have the same consistency, and if you, you know, if somebody put them both in front of me and they asked me to tell them apart without giving me, you know, having them labeled, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two of them. However, um, my preference still is the Tarte Maracuja Oil. I just really love this stuff. I put it on every night on my face. I just think it absorbs in my skin just a little bit better than the Josie Marin Argon Oil. So, Tarte Maracuja Oil, I've been using this forever. I love this stuff and this is probably the most amazing product for for your skin just for I just think for keeping your skin looking young and beautiful I call this my fountain of youth I really do believe this stuff is just just like absolutely freaking amazing and if you look at the reviews on this it is like a five-star product so this is amazing sample if you can get a sample of it please try it I think you will absolutely love it okay next the next sample I have is the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, Clear Brow Gel Sample. Now, when it 
you know, it comes out, it comes out like a little wand, like you would put mascara on with, and it is, I'm gonna put this on here, it's just clear. I mean, there's nothing on it. Um, you know, I am someone who does not buy any extra stuff. And what I mean by that is, I kind of buy what I really, really think I really need for my everyday needs for makeup that I really love, but I don't apply extra stuff just to apply extra stuff. And to me, the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel is kind of like extra stuff. Um, unless you have like crazy unruly brows that you're trying to tame, but you know, really, if you're gonna pluck and groom your brows, I am not a big fan of uh, brow gels in, in general, and I don't like this one. And the reason being is I put this on and it made my brows kind of stiff and crunchy. And I just don't like feeling my eyebrows and having them feel not like hair and have them feel like kind of crispy and crunchy. I just think that's so unnatural. I groom my eyebrows. So for me, I really don't need a brow gel. Uh, I think it's an extra step for me that I just don't need in my makeup routine. Now maybe you feel that you would really love to have a, a, a eyebrow gel to tame your eyebrows, your wild crazy eyebrows. But for me, I keep my eyebrows fairly well groomed, short, and I don't find the need for this extra expense. And like I said, I just don't like the way that this Anastasia Clear Brow Gel feels. It makes my eyebrows crispy and crunchy, and that's not a way to have eyebrows. So this sample got used, but it's not gonna be purchased in a full size. So we're gonna move on to the next sample. The next sample I have is a Michael Kors perfume. Now I believe if, I got this sample from Sephora, and I believe if you look on the Sephora website, I think there are a couple Michael Kors perfumes. One is Michael Kors, and I think that one's, one's called Suede, and then there's another one that's just called Michael Kors. Well, that's what this one is, just the plain old Michael Kors, and I think it runs somewhere around $95, and to describe the scent of it, it's probably more of a sensual, I'd say a very wearable, sophisticated scent. It smells a little bit of I think a little bit floral to me, a little bit of lilies, peony. I think it smells really good. I think it, it just smells beautiful. And I guess a similar scent, maybe the Jennifer Aniston scent might be close to this. But when I first got it and squirted it on, I thought to myself, oh, I love this scent. I could wear this every day. Uh, next time I am considering purchasing a perfume, I would love to get this. Um, and I tried it on and I wore it every day and I just loved it and then one night I was helping my teenage son with his geometry homework and I had squirted some of this on and I sat down next to him and he said gosh mom you smell like, you smell like old lady perfume and that right there was enough for me to say okay Michael Kors even though I love you I'm probably not going to purchase you because I don't want to smell like old lady perfume. But for some reason, that's what he got from it. So I guess, you know, I kind of go by what my teenage son says. And if he says I smell good and sweet, that's probably what I'm going to go with. So I think I may stick with my sweeter smelling vanilla scent perfume that I have right now and bypass the Michael Kors that I really thought I was going to like. But um, I just don't want to smell like those women that kind of like these little ladies that have that kind of smell that you just know. I don't know. It's just kind of gross. So anyway, that is the evaluation of the Michael Kors. If you look at the Sephora website, it almost has five stars. So obviously, there are a lot of women that like this scent. However, judging from the men in my life, they're not real thrilled with this scent. So... If you want to buy the scent for you because you really love it and you really don't care what anybody else thinks, then go for it. I really believe this is a wonderful scent. Um, so you're probably going to have to just test it out yourself and see what you think about it. But it really is a beautiful floral scent that you may want to consider trying. The next sample I have is the Chanel's Inimitable Intense Mascara. 
And if you look up the word inimitable in the dictionary, it means incapable of being duplicated or imitated. And when I first got this sample, I thought to myself, yeah, right, $30 for a mascara. I'm sure I'm gonna be able to find something in the drugstore that's you know, really close to this or very similar. And I have purchased a lot of drugstore mascaras and I've purchased a lot of expensive mascaras, but I've never purchased the Chanel mascara just basically for the fact that I really have a hard time paying $30 for mascara. I just think there has to be something that I can find that's a dupe for this that's just as good. So I was really skeptical when I started using this mascara. If you look at it, when you pull it out of the tube, I mean, it comes out like this every time. There's really, uh, I mean, no matter how many times I pull this thing out, there's really, other than maybe a little drip on the tip, there's really no clumping or no gunk on the fibers of the wand, which I really love. And what I also love about this wand is it's, it's bendable, as you can see. It's really very flexible. You can kind of bend it to kind of go and um, get it in the areas that you want. And then you really can bend it right back uh, straight again the way it was originally. This stuff is, as all I can say is freaking amazing. That's probably the best description for this product. Uh, no clumping, no flaking, no running, you know, nothing, uh, no spiking. It goes on the same every time. It almost curls my lashes, which sounds crazy, but sometimes if I don't have an eyelash curler, if I'm going somewhere and I don't want to bring an eyelash curler with me, I just use this and it almost seems like it's curling my lashes, which I know sounds really kind of magical, but it really does. I've used this, uh, I actually had two samples of this product, so I went through both of them before I actually went out and forked over the money and purchased them. And if you go and look at my little blog, which is posted, the, the URL is posted somewhere on this window, um, I have some before and after pictures using this mascara. And like I said, I love it because it just kind of, when you pull it out of the container, it comes out the same every time. It's not like I pull it out one time and there's a bunch of fibrous clumps all over it and the next time there's nothing. Every time I pull this wand out of the container, it looks exactly the same. When I put it on my eyelashes, it separates my eyelashes beautifully. Just kind of, you can see almost like all the individual lashes. It doesn't clump. It elongates my lashes, makes them look a little thicker. But like I said, I have a real problem with pulling mascara out and having a big glob of mascara on there and then putting it on my eyelashes and then having it just have big clumps all over my eyelashes. This product is amazing. That's all I can say. If you can get a sample of this and try it yourself, I think you'll find the same thing. But like I said, I have spent, I don't know how much money on mascaras in my lifetime. Instead of spending, you know, hundreds of dollars on different drugstore mascaras, you know, $7 here, $7 there, $6 here, and never really kind of liking some of them, to me, it's worth spending $30 on one mascara that you truly love that does what you want it to do. So this is probably the star sample that we have for today. As I'm looking at my little timer, it looks like my YouTube 15 minutes of fame is almost up. So what I think I'll probably have to do is I'll probably have to end this video right now and then hopefully in the next couple weeks I'll keep going through my sample bag and go through some more samples with another video.